Okay, thank you very much. Your name is Chappie? Uh, Neville Chappie Williams. Neville Chappie Williams. I'm a part of the Wiradjuri people. Yes, what, what are the, you in New South Wales or where is the... Uh, it's in New South Wales. Yeah, it takes up about one third of New South Wales, uh, Wiradjuri country. Yes. It's really a big area. So, such a great insight for the the Aboriginal cultures to come and create a space and just hold that space almost like 24-7 for years and years and years. Uh, yes, it's, you know, um, it's been a desperate, never-ending uphill fight. And uh, we're fighting the, the government. Uh, there's been an attempt to, uh, uh, to pull the, the embassy down. This is the Aboriginal Tent Embassy, and it's uh, a focus point. It's a stage for the Aboriginal people to come together and unite in our fight for justice. Even the brilliance of calling it an embassy, to say that you're a sovereign nation, that you're a nation before before a nation, is a real stroke uh, of genius. Uh, yes, um, there's... Um, Wiradjuri sovereignty has never ceded by invasion or by time. Our sovereignty still exists to this very day. And none of the other nations, I believe, the Aboriginal nations have ever seceded their sovereignty. They've never ceded their sovereignty. So yeah. then the strange part is that the law, system of law, of uh, Western law is built on... Uh, an injustice. That's right. Well, this government, it's a foreign government. Right. It's, you but know... They are claiming to be Australian. They're not British or anything, right? We are the sovereign people... Right. ...of these lands. We are sovereign. There's a lot of people who... Uh, uh, well, when... The Endeavour, Jimmy Cookie, he captained that boat called the Endeavour in around 1788. The sails of the Endeavour had tore across our land as though it were a raging storm, silencing the sounds of hundreds of languages, extinguishing the fire, our sacred fire. That's the man from Albion, Jimmy Cookie. We were driven from our lands at the most horrendous of means. Murders, massacres. Right across the continent there was massacres everywhere. There was an attempt to wipe our race out, but we have survived the white man's world. So many white men's worlds have attempted to wipe out who was there before. Yes. And also, I suppose, some uh, men, uh, men of race, uh, you know, other original people that attempted to wipe out of earlier peoples, I, I suppose it, it seems to happen. Right? Yes, it's, well, it's the greed of the white man. It's greed. In the Aboriginal way, you know, it's uh, curing and sharing the old black natural way. We walk with nature as our forebears have done so since time had begun. The land, the grass, the trees, the animals, natural things, the natural way. It would be unthinkable for our people to destroy the world around us because nature provided everything that we had ever wanted. It seems like in this day and age, the white men, as some white men, are, tr are starting to understand the importance. And they're calling it by names like uh, how we can sustain ourselves, sustainability. But we're just discovering that it's the truth that you have known for so long. But maybe there's hope because of that. And yes. some people are willing to listen and open up their hearts. Yes. Because a closed heart is always a separation. Even in a separation, we can dismiss. Yes. And then somebody has more power than somebody else, and they attempt to dismiss them. And even if they don't wholesalely dismiss them, it seems like the way they accept them is always 
with a limited understanding. Well, you see, the, the Aboriginal people, they have the knowledge. And the, 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 the governments, and they, uh, you know, wouldn't take notice of what the Aboriginal people would tell them. Uh, there are places around New South Wales where, uh, the, you know, my people would tell them whether they would camp or build, you know, structures of houses, and they'd tell them, no, 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 mother of water will come down, and that's what's happened. There was Even this blood weekend there's flooding. Yeah, that's right, yes. And uh, with the, the trees, once, you know, the white man landed on their shores, they started cutting trees down. You know, chopping trees down, clearing trees. But uh, the Aboriginal people attempted to tell them, but they wouldn't listen to the Aboriginal people. The Aboriginal people had the answers, but they wouldn't listen. So much of past has a lot of pain in it. Yes. A lot of injustice. And yet we seek to build a future that is, doesn't have that same characteristics. No. So then, what's the key? How can we do it? Some people have, so many people that I've talked to have a different idea. Some mm. think that uh, the government has to change, but mm -hmm. some think that uh, maybe we can stand tall even before the government. Yes, but the government won't listen to what my people are saying. Uh, there's laws in this land. You know, a section 90 in the National Park and Wildlife Act, there's a section 90 and a section 87 permit that's in the National Parks and Wildlife. And where they can apply the white man who's going to want to develop a certain area will virtually take no notice of the Aboriginal people. They will just issue permits and... Uh, uh, and, you know, start doing uh, surveys without, the, you know, they get a, an archaeologist to, to come along as well. But we are the experts in our culture, not the archaeologist. We are the experts. They, they bring into the country, uh, you know, from overseas, archaeologists from overseas. And this is another country here. And it's our culture, what they are destroying. The artifacts and cultural objects are very, very old. They are older than the pyramids of Egypt. And, uh, you know, it's... Do the Aboriginal people have a representation in this government, or they, do they even want one? Do they want a, a participation, a guaranteed participation in and how uh, legislation could be formulated? Or would they prefer to, because uh, I hear when they say sovereignty, I'm not so sure what it means. Well, so we are the sovereign people of this land. Yes. You know, the, who landed on their shores, you know, years ago, around 1788, they landed on their shores and zunk with the flag and they claim this land. But they didn't know what, you know, they, that was on their shores, but they didn't know what was happening in inland. When the explorers came over the Blue Mountains, they came into Wiradjuri country and Wiradjuri resisted. Sure, you know, our people speared a sheep or two. Well, after all, the sheep was on our land and that's when martial law was enforced upon our people, where it wasn't murder to kill Aboriginal people. So again, I'm, 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 I'm wondering, because so much pain has happened in the past, and I know that uh, even in my nation, North America, we were very murderous, and maybe still are till today, but you know, somehow we can make a definition that somebody's an enemy, mm. go to Saddam Hussein or something like that. Mm. But uh, what I'm saying is, if we 
and okay, you can look at the Jewish race and that they, they, they acknowledge the Holocaust again and again, right? And they don't want to forget, but in the meantime, can you build a life on, on, on a bed of sadness? Can you build a new life on a bed of sadness? Well, or what's the key? What's the turning point? How will we ever well, turn it? We have endured incredible brutality at the hands of the invading force. We're much more than what the Jews on the, in the Second World War. Uh, you know, genocide has been committed on our people for more than 200 years. And uh, cultural genocide, our, the, our stolen dreams, you see, we were put onto mission stations, and mission stations were concentration camps. It was about control, controlling the Aboriginal people. And um, did, that, did that only happen in the coastal regions, or was no? It, it was the right across the right across the continent. There was, you know, missions here and there. They would put white managers, but in the earlier days, it was the church that were the managers, the church, ministers, and their religion was forced upon us. So that was no better? Or that was no, we, we, we had our own religion. And the white man had virtually came and, and forced his religion onto us. They had the Bible in the left hand and a gun in the right hand. And that's happened all around the world, where the white man had forced onto the, the indigenous people. And that happened in, in your country as well. Absolutely. And the same, what happened in your country, same thing. Well, they knew what happened in your country, that's more than, that's 500 years in front of, what is it, 200 and, 30 years or so, or thereabouts. And that, that's how much advance that they had and they knew what to do when they got here. Poison the water rolls, poisoning our people. So they're poisoning the water for themselves too because they're just uh, mm -hmm. thinking of what those chemicals can render as far as uh, extracting gold or extracting minerals or extracting uh, gas from coal, or, so then that's all they think about. They don't think about well, that's, the sustainability of the land and the importance of the land. That's right. You know, it's well out at Lake Cowell. I've been fighting a, a mining company from Canada, uh, Barry Gold. Been fighting them for about 12 years now. Our sacred sites is our dreaming place, and there was a large massacre at Lake Cowell, where the troopers were led to where our people were in ceremony. They was led there by the, the black trackers, and they led the troopers there, and there was a lot of our people who were massacred, destroyed. And uh, I can recall one instance where uh, my nephew, we was up in Queensland, and this uh, my nephew was speaking to this church minister about what happened to our people, and the church minister said, "Get over it, get over it." You know, how can you? You know, it, it takes a lot to get over when your your family has been slaughtered. You know, it's and that was a church minister. Well, now, can reparations ever be made? How can it ever be healed, this wound? Well, it needs to be... It's, it's, a, it's a big issue, but it needs reparation and compensation. And that's what... with And as well with the Stolen Generation. My parents were a part of the Stolen Generation, and that is just one year back... Uh, one generation back. Uh, my mother... She was a young girl at that time, and my father, he was a young boy. And um, 
they were stolen from Warren Gasda Mission and they were put in uh, uh, my father was put in a, a church home in the Camden Picton area in New South Wales and my mother was put in another home in Cootamundra and uh, the atrocities that have what happened to a lot of the girls and uh, a lot of the boys as well and like in a home at Kinchilla, up near Campsie in New South Wales and they were just like soldiers that they marched like the soldiers and a lot of the girls they were raped by welfare officers and that was to breed the colour out and when you look at what had happened to our people you see when my parents well, they later became my parents but when they um, were freed from home and they became of age, I think it was about 18, and they went back to Cara and they were lucky enough when they were uh, old enough to know where they were from. And uh, there was a lot of children who were taken when they were babies, they were just lost in the system. At, you know, various places. There's still people to this very day who were looking for their parents. A lot of the parents would be passed on now. And uh, still, at the Tent Embassy here, uh, there's a lot of uh, young people who come here now. And, so, and the elders say, well, you know, you look like so-and-so. And they'd be looking for their parents. You know, but their, their parents will, you know, probably be passed on now. And that's what the, uh, you know, the system, the system made. Uh, there was cousins who were violent people now who hate white people. And the system made him the man that he became. Yes, of course. Does anybody hold a vision of what it would look like when things are at peace and when uh, uh, at least the Aboriginal populations will live in love and when they'll be, uh, they're still happy now sometimes, but then there's this basic heaviness. And I mean, I'm not saying we should, I'm not the priest that says get over it, man, mm. but I'm the guy that says, wouldn't it be great to have a vision so that we can see work toward uh, have an intention that how it would look and, and what would satisfy all Aborigines and actually what would be acceptable to all white people and how it would work in harmony because somehow we all have to be together we can't just half of us disappear either half right but with our land we, we need our land back yes when you know without our land we are nothing and that's what we need our land now, where I come from, a Rambi mission, that's where I, I was born at Kara, and the Rambi mission was 32 acres. And the Wiradjuri country is much bigger. It took up about one third of New South Wales. And all we have is uh, just a little block of land here where they can put a few houses for, you know, uh, the, the, the local Aboriginal people. What would it look like if you had your land back? Would you have the whole continent back? And then uh, would everyone have to pay rent? Or, I mean, how would it work? You would have control of all resources or just a certain part of them? Or how would it look? Well, there was uh, pamphlets put around, pay the rent. You're on Aboriginal land. Pay the rent. Pay the rent. Right. You see, so, but money is really not the only answer, right? Even no, you it isn't. Had a no, ton of money, no. Uh, I don't know. Would it would it would it bring fulfillment in life? Well, there's a lot of riches that could be, you know, ours belong to us or come. But um, that's a it's a big issue. To you know, I'm not sort of the the only one that can make decisions. Of course, of course. I just wonder yeah. who would be good to talk to that would have a vision. Well, it needs the, uh, the elders. I hope I get introduced, and I hope I am. Yeah. I thank you so much for telling us these, uh, this great heartfelt story. Yeah.
and that uh, we can feel the, the, the gravity of it and the importance of it and the, and the need to acknowledge it and the need to tell the world, you know, and the need. Also, we believe there's a need to have a vision, but uh, that has to come in time, I guess. Well, you see, whatever, whatever the grass grows and the water flows, we will never give up. We'll fight to the bitter end to protect and preserve our ancient cultural heritage. Our ancient cultural heritage is very, very old. We are the oldest continuing living culture in the world. And we will fight to the bitter end to protect and preserve our ancient okay. cultural heritage. Beautiful. It's older than the pyramids of Egypt. Of course. Let's love to the bitter end, not to the happy end. <laughs> let's, mm. let's, be a, let's open our hearts also, right? Mm. In a fight well fought, or well, in a, in a people that stand tall. Mm. Are those good words? Yes, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Good, thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Good, thank you.